the how to give meaning to this first order logic formulas okay so so we have defined first order logic syntax in which we had terms we had atoms we had formulas now we need it's time to give meaning to these objects first we start with a model okay once you have a signature then you need to provide meaning to all the functions in the predicate occurring in that signature that's your model so how do i provide meaning to all these functions and predicates first let's suppose i give you this model m it has one part basically sets the domain is the space okay, where the values will come for in this space the function f let's say the interpretation of is some function which takes n parameters n is the arity of the function and gives you the one value in that space similarly for predicates you have a one interpretation you have a set of n tuples the arity of a predicate is uh, n then set of n tuples okay, is interpretation of pm okay and s mods denotes the set of all s models so some terminology you know dm is called domain of the model okay. fm assigns the meaning to f under the model k that's what we say and similarly pm assigns meaning to p under the model m let's look at an example you have this signature we have a c f g h and m symbols and let's try to give them meaning okay so let's suppose i choose a domain this domain has three values red blue and brown i just chose three things it can be four it can be hundred it's our choice okay so we chose three so now we have to give meaning to each of the symbol okay so let's start with c okay so how do you give the c meaning okay you choose one of those values and say okay c is this so you can say c is blue okay. now i have to give a sign a meaning to f so what is the meaning of f every input it produces an output so that if you give function f any of these thing as input should produce one output okay so you can have let's say suppose in function f you give it blue it produces brown or give it brown it produces red red it produces red and this is the interpretation of function fm similarly you go on and then you say okay i want to give interpretation to g yes what is the interpretation of g it takes two things as input and produces one thing as the output so you have to write for every pair what would be the output blue blue it produces brown uh, blue brown blue red it produces some output and similarly you have to go on all pairs so this is the definition of gm we need to assign meaning to each predicate okay? h has a single parameter takes single parameters therefore set of values will be the interpretation of h so you just pick a subset of all the values let's say we drop red the blue and brown is the set that represents h now m takes two parameters so all the pairs okay of the subsets of dm will be uh, you, you will be the interpretation of m so for m you basically choose pairs okay depends there are so many pairs i think there are nine pairs so you just pick two of them or maybe seven of them whatever of those say this is my interpretation of uh, predicate capital m so recall we also had variables okay who will assign to the variables like well, how do i give meaning to the variables right so for that we need to define something called assignment so in, an assignment is a map which is it we will write as new which takes variables and give them value from the domain okay so these are very much like constants so in our running example in the domain is let's say natural number then we may have the following assignment the variable x has value 2 and variable y has value 3 so how do i give meaning to my terms okay, so we we know how to give meaning to these functions predicates and uh, my uh, my variables now i have to give meaning to all the terms then we'll give meaning to all the atoms and then we'll give meaning to all the formulas okay so let's see how do i give meaning to terms this is the thing we define gives the meaning 
uh, m to the power nu. Basically, saying m is the model, nu is the assignment. They work together to produce the interpretation for that particular term. So let's suppose term happens to be x. If it is x, you can simply say, okay, whatever the meaning under nu is, you just return it. That is the value of that term also. Let's suppose you are trying to interpret a function. So what do you do? You interpret the t1 to tn first under your model and assignment. You get a value. Then you take the model of the uh, that function, okay, and then apply those values in and then get the value and then you that will be the output of your your term. Here's an example. Let's suppose you have a signature which has two function s and plus and no predicates. So the term let's say you choose chosen to think about is sx plus y. Okay. And the interpretation is natural. You choose the natural numbers your domain. Successor is your uh, s and the natural plus is interpretation of your plus. Okay. Let's suppose we give the assignment x is equals to 3 and y is equals to 2. So how do I interpret this term? So we will go inside out. Yeah. So to get the meaning of this guy, I need to first assign the meaning of this guy, then this guy, then this guy, and then this whole guy. Okay. So we we'll break it down. So it's okay. First give me the meaning of this guy and this guy, then I will move on. Yeah. So I went inside again, says okay, first I interpret this, and this guy is interpreted to be two. Okay, so I, I finally this guy gets interpreted to three because x is three. Now the interpretation of function s is successor, so it's three successor of three is four, and four plus two is six. Okay, so that's how you interpret a term. So now we will define something called satisfaction relation. The way we define satisfaction relation in the case of uh, propositional logic, right? So similarly, we'll define a definition here. So we define satisfaction relation among models, assignments, and formulas as follows. Okay? If you give me a model, an assignment, it will always satisfy true. Okay? If you give me model and an assignment, and you interpret under these things, uh, under model and assignment, the terms t1 to tn, and take their values and see if that tuple is inside the interpretation of the predicate. If it is there, then you say I collected the p. Okay. If now let's look at the t1 equals to t2. Well, interpret both the terms. If the value comes out to be the same, then you say okay, they are equal. Not f. Then you say if you m comma v, then if m comma v does not satisfy f, then you give okay r and all the proposition variables are usually that will be interpreted the same way as we did the uh, proposition logic so there's nothing new is happening the new thing is the quantifiers remember that we had quantifiers okay so let's see and now the variables come into in the game okay so you have a variable there exists an x f if there is a value u in the domain of the model m such that if you assign the va value to x in this assignment v and now you try to evaluate this in f okay? and then you get satisfied then you say okay m comma v satisfy there exist x f okay? for all x is it's a symmetrical idea in which any value you choose from the mod uh, model should satisfy this formula f let's suppose you have this uh, signature s and you have this uh, formula to interpret so how do i say that uh, something satisfies this or not so first need a model okay so let's choose a model okay so your model is this m which is natural number successor and plus and then you have uh, assignment x is assigned to three y is assigned to two Okay. and let's see how we are going to interpret this so we have seen uh, we can interpret uh, m of m v s x plus y just simply uh, uh, evaluating to 6 okay. so we don't need to do it again so we know it so 
that's fine uh, so let's see uh, how are we going to evaluate this whole part okay so let's pick z to be 5 it's our choice okay so somehow we chosen it to z uh, z equals to 5 and then you say simplify it then you will say oh uh, xs plus y uh, is equal to uh, same thing because it doesn't have a z occurring here so it's, it's basically what value this guy gives to z doesn't matter so output comes out 6 okay so good let's look at the right hand side uh, if z is 5 its successor is 6 so its interpretation is 6 very nice so that means uh, under this model an assignment uh, I can say that this term is equal to this term. Good. Now, since I have found a value of z such that uh, this equality can be made true, so therefore there exists z. Okay. So what now I can say that so we this model n assignment satisfies this formula. So we say f is satisfiable if there are m and v such that m comma v satisfies f otherwise f is called unsatisfiable f is true we say f is true uh, in m which is written m satisfies f if there for all new we have m comma new satisfies f f is valid Okay, no matter what assignment and what model we choose, it gets satisfied. So we we'll say, okay, it's so valid, and the notation is this. Okay, and uh, this means uh, unsatisfiable. So these are the definitions which are directly borrowed from the proposition logic, the verbatim, and it doesn't change here. Here we define overloading of implication and equivalence and equisatisfiability. So this ends our uh, exposition of um, giving syntax of the first law logic and giving a meaning of the first law logic.